This life of ours is full of trials. There is no stage of our lives except that we face in it anxieties, grief, stress, and worries. And if you look at the life of our Prophet ﷺ, he faced far more powerful struggles than we did. His anxieties were far greater than anything we can imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed at the very first major crisis of his life, of his spiritual life, Allah revealed a surah that will be the subject of our khutbah today because it deals with how to grapple with anxiety and stress. It deals with what to do when you're facing challenges. It deals with what to do when you're so overcome. You might be verging on depression. You might be thinking thoughts that are un-Islamic. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself went through something of this nature, a very minuscule amount at the beginning of his prophethood. And Allah revealed a surah that set him aright in this regard. If you look at the early seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the first year of the revelation of the Quran, there was a time frame, some scholars said up to six months, that Allah did not reveal any Quran. So the Quran came, Iqra came, Muzzammil came, Muddathir came, and then after a while, no Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ began wondering, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Maybe Allah doesn't love me anymore. Maybe I've done something to displease Allah and I'm not worthy of Allah's love. These feelings that we now call anxiety, borderline depression, these feelings of doubting your self-worth, they came to none other than the greatest human being ever to walk the face of this earth. And for many weeks, many months, no revelation came. So much so that he began to think that Allah does not like him anymore. That he is not beloved to Allah. That he has failed in the mission. Then, at the very end of this time frame, Abu Lahab's wife taunted him and said, What's this? We haven't seen any Quran for so long. Maybe your shaitan has abandoned you. A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah. And this really hurt him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he went home very depressed, anxious. And it was at that point in time that Allah revealed the surah that we all know. It is surah al-duha. Wal-duha wa layli idha saja. Allah gives the oath, the qasam. And we all know qasam means Allah wants to draw attention. Allah wants to emphasize what he is saying is true and listen to what I'm about to say. And by giving the qasam of the dawn, what does the dawn symbolize? In every culture, in every language, in every society, in every civilization, what does the dawn symbolize? The beginning of a new era. It is a new day. It is new opportunity. It is new hope. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. Wadduha. This is how Allah begins the surah. Don't look at the past. Look at the future. Don't worry about what happened. Today is a new day with new opportunities. The sun is coming up again. The sun is bringing new opportunities. The day is bringing new opportunities. Wadduha. Wallayli idha saja. Allah gives a qasam by the morning sun that is coming up. The early time, which is the time of barakah, the time of activity, the time when everybody wakes up and the hustle and bustle and the traffic. All of this is wadduha. Wallayli. And the night when it becomes calm, which is the time of sleep, which is the time of sukoon. Once again, both of these are contrasting. When you go to sleep as well, the worries of this dunya go away. When you wake up and the sun is coming up, no matter how bad was yesterday, today is a new day. Allah is giving qasam by both of these that the rest of the surah is true and authentic and correct. What is the rest of the surah? This is a negation. Stop feeling that you are worthless. Stop feeling feeling that you're worth nothing. Ma wadda'aka rabbuk. Your Lord has neither abandoned you nor does he hate you. Allah does not hate any believer. No believer is despised by Allah. Yes, Allah does not love sins, but Allah loves those who turn to him. Allah loves the repenter. Allah loves the muhsineen. Allah loves the muttaqeen. Allah loves the mu'mineen. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah loves his servants more than a mother loves her baby child. Allah is the wadud, the one who is ever loving. Ma wadda'aka your Lord has neither abandoned you nor does he despise you. No doubt this ayah is in the singular to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no doubt he occupies the maximum share. But it is true that every person who believes in that Prophet, every person who considers himself of the ummah of that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a share of this verse will apply to him or her as well. Your Lord does not hate you, O Muslim. Your Lord does not despise you, O believer in Allah. Your Lord has not abandoned 
abandoned you, O you who says La ilaha illallah. Your Lord will never abandon you. Did He not create you? Did He not guide you? Did He not give you all that you have? Stop feeling this sense of worthlessness. Ma wa rabbuka wa ma qala. Your Lord has not abandoned you and He does not despise you. He is with you and He loves you. Ma wa rabbuka wa ma qala is a statement of negation. It is not true the way that you feel, Ya Rasulullah. Ma wa rabbuka ma qala wa la al-akhiratu khayru laka min al-ula. Now this verse comes and after getting rid of the negativity, it's substituted with positivity. Get rid of the negative feeling and think positive. Get rid of the pessimism and change it with optimism. Tomorrow will be a better day. The future will be better than the past. The future, meaning in this dunya, will be better than the past. This is a part of our creed. Our Prophet wasallam said, Allah loves optimism. It's an authentic hadith. Memorize it. Allah loves optimism. It is a part of Iman to be optimistic. We think tomorrow will be better than yesterday. Today the Meccans are persecuting you. Today your followers are being killed. Today this is happening. Tomorrow you will enter this city as a conqueror. The day after tomorrow, Three days from now, from beginning to end, you will see Muslims everywhere in every corner as we see right now. Always be optimistic. Now somebody will say, but sometimes the future is not better than the past. And we say, perhaps in this dunya, perhaps for some people, tomorrow will be a little bit more difficult than yesterday. But, for every single believer without exception, even if this world is a world of misery and pain, the believer has something else to look forward to. And that is the real akhirah. That is the akhirah of Jannah. Okay, maybe this dunya is tough. Okay, maybe you're going through some tough times, but never forget there is an akhirah. And in that akhirah, Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you. Allah will reward and reward and reward. There shall be everlasting bliss, optimism in this dunya and also more importantly in the akhirah. Okay, life is tough. Wallahi, sometimes it is tough. Maybe, maybe, whatever issue we're having, we're not going to solve it in this dunya. Maybe that cancer will not be solved. Maybe our relative will not be cured. Maybe this and that, maybe, okay. But in the end of the day, this world is not the end world. Look forward to the akhirah, the eternal world. Don't concentrate on this dunya. You shall get. You shall get, maybe not exactly what you want, but you will get enough good that you will be happy and content. Whenever Allah takes something away, our Prophet ﷺ said, He gives something better than this, the authentic hadith. Whenever Allah takes something away and you are patient, Allah gives you something better than what He has taken away. Allah will give you and give you and give you until you will be content. He didn't say He will give you what you want. No, maybe you won't get what you want. But Allah will give you. And Allah will give you until you are happy with Allah's qadr and decree. And once again, in this dunya, and just in case it's not in this dunya, then for sure in the akhirah. So these three verses we said, they negate spiritual feelings of emptiness and negativity. Spiritually, people feel, I'm not worthwhile. Allah doesn't love me. I'm not good enough. These three verses negate them. You are worthwhile. Allah does love you. You have potential in you. The next three, Three verses. They negate feelings of worthlessness in this dunya. People think, oh, I've always been unlucky. Whatever I do, I just don't get it. So the first three verses we said, feelings of worthlessness from a spiritual perspective. These three verses, feelings of worthlessness from a worldly, from a dunyawi perspective. And every time I take an exam, I fail. Every time I try to do a business, it goes bankrupt. Oh, I just have no luck in this life. What's wrong? Maybe Allah doesn't like me. So we have three verses now about worthlessness of this dunya. This is material worthlessness. This also happens when you're struggling struggling with depression, when you're battling anxiety, you get feelings of, of, of lacking confidence in this dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam fa'awa. Fahada. Fa'agna. Three rhetorical questions. And the purpose of a rhetorical question is to emphasize what is already known, not to teach something you didn't know, to bring up a memory, you should have it, you should be thinking about it, but you're not thinking about it. Something has clouded you. So the rhetorical question, it jars you, it makes you a 
alert. For example, the teacher is rebuking the student. The teacher says, am I not your teacher? Meaning, how can you speak to me this way? I am your teacher. To emphasize that which is known but has been neglected. That's the rhetorical question. So Allah asks three rhetorical questions. Meaning, Ya Rasulullah, how could you think that Allah has abandoned you? How could you think that you are no one? You have no worth. Look at all the blessings Allah has given you. Then Allah mentions three blessings. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. Your mother died, your father died, your grandfather died. You were a yatim in every sense of the word. Yet, at every stage of your life, didn't we take care of you? Didn't we send someone else to protect you? When your father passed away, even before you were born, your mother was there for you. When your mother passes away, your grandfather took you. When your grandfather passed away, your uncle Abu Talib took you. At every stage of your life, your vulnerability was protected by Allah. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. Wawajadaka dhalan fahada. You didn't know the truth, Ya Rasulullah. You used to go to Ghari Hira. You used to be praying to Allah to guide you. You didn't know how to worship Allah. You didn't know the details of Iman, the details of the Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided you. You were not upon the guidance. You didn't know the guidance. Allah azza wa guided you. And we found you. You didn't have any money, Ya Rasulullah. You didn't have anything. You were poor. Your parents did not leave you a fortune. But now we gifted you. Our scholars say, Aghna here is Khadija and the wealth of Khadija. And this shows us the blessings of having a good spouse and a righteous spouse. That the spouse brought you, Ya Rasulullah. Now you have a house. He did not have a house. Now you have an income. Now you don't have to worry about risk. You don't have to worry about sustenance. And Allah Azza wa has given you enough that you can live a comfortable life. Meaning, what is the purpose of these three verses, dear brothers and sisters? Anytime something negative faces you, anytime your business fails, anytime you're in a car crash, anytime your exam doesn't pass, anytime shaitan comes and throws a thought in your head, oh my God, I have no luck. Realize, there are always positives in your life that you're overlooking at that stage. Shaitan has caused you to neglect some of the biggest blessings that Allah has given you. And you concentrate on the negative rather than the positive. Ya Rasulullah, look at all of these positives that you have. How could you ever have thought that Allah abandoned you? Allah neglected you? Allah hated you? How is that even possible? At every stage of your life, Allah blessed you with all of these things. So we learn from this. When feelings of worthlessness come, when feelings of despair come, don't look at the negatives, don't look at the failures. Remind yourselves of the positives. Okay, this didn't work out, but Allah blessed me with that. Okay, maybe I don't have something, but I have something else. Always look at the positives rather than the negatives. Always concentrate on the blessings and examine them rather than what you don't have. See, this society that we live in, this modern culture, it emphasizes what we don't have. Look at this multi-million dollar mansion. Look at this beautiful cars. Look at this and we want to just aspire we want that we want that we want that our sharia says stop looking at what you don't have and look at what you do have it's a hadith of our prophet when one of you sees something that you don't have and you begin to desire it stop looking there and look at somebody who doesn't have what you have been blessed with so that you appreciate the positive that you have. So you wanted to have all of this multi-million dollar mansion or house or whatever. Look at the people who don't even have a house and thank Allah you have that. You wanted to have this and that. Look at something that you have. Good health, let's say. Good wealth, let's say. Happy family, loving wife. These are blessings you're taking for granted. Rather than look at what you don't have, remind yourself of what you do have. That's what these three verses do. And they contextualize and they make us appreciate we are blessed and fortunate. Every one of us is blessed and fortunate in our own way. It's just that we neglect and ignore our blessings and we concentrate on what we don't have. So Allah in these three verses reminds us to think about what we do have. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّدْ فَأَمَّا Once you have a different frame of mind, once your psychology has shifted, don't just sit there and do nothing. Go and be proactive. Do something positive. Contribute to society. Don't just sit there and mill around and say, Oh my God, life is tough. Okay, it might be tough. Maybe it is difficult. Okay, be optimistic. Change your paradigm. Change your frame of mind. And then go find a higher cause. And go dedicate yourself to that cause. Do something useful with your life. Do something that will bring meaning and value to you and to others around you. Contribute positively in a way that will make you internally happy and externally bring about the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every one of us, without exception, can bring happiness to other people in some fashion or form. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّدْ As for the orphan, Ya Rasulullah, don't overpower the orphan. Meaning, what does it mean here? Don't overpower the orphan. Be involved in the life of an orphan, of a sa'il, of a beggar, in a manner that makes them happy. 
Show some love to those who need it. Because when you're battling with depression, when you're struggling with issues, it's difficult. Life is difficult, no doubt about it. Find somebody else and share their pain with your pain. Eliminate their pain. Make their pain easier for them. And guess what? What a beautiful religion we have. What a great Lord we have. When we give happiness to others, Allah gives happiness to us free of charge. Subhanallah. When we become useful to other people, our lives become useful to us. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ Go find those that are deprived and do something meaningful. Even if you cannot give something to the sa'il, the sa'il is the beggar. Sometimes we don't have the money, sometimes we don't. So Allah is saying, even if you cannot give something, don't be harsh to the beggar and say, hey, go away from here, no money. No, be gentle. Be soft. May Allah make things easy for you. I don't have anything today, but you know, I make dua for you. This is, وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ If you cannot give something cash or physical, then give something with your akhlaq. Don't be nasty to the one who comes to you. He also has issues like you do. And of course, the point here is that when we are struggling with our own issues, and all of us are, never forget there are people that are struggling with worse issues than ours. Or different issues. Maybe worse is not the, the best adjective. Different issues. We all have our pain. We all have our struggles. And when we go help other people, subhanAllah, Allah will help us. When we go and give of our time and our money to others, our lives become meaningful. Our depression becomes less. We get a purpose a sense of doing something nobility comes to us we feel useful when we give unto others and then the final verse this ayah is so profound it has so many multiple meaning I'll just mention only two of them in fact there's many more than two I'll mention only two of them the first meaning don't speak negative speak positive don't complain to others, oh, I didn't pass my exam. Rather say, Alhamdulillah, I have children. Alhamdulillah, I have a house. Tell people the positive. Thank Allah for the good. If you try to count Allah's blessings, you're not going to be able to count them. Don't count the negatives, count the positives. Don't go moan and groan to the people about what's bad. Thank Allah and tell them what is good. This is one meaning. And it's a valid meaning. And of course, this is true. As even Ya'qub, I'm complaining only to Allah. I'm not complaining to any of you. Ya'qub said, I'm not complaining to any of you. Allah is the one I complain to. Oh Allah, look at my situation. I don't want your sympathy. I want his sympathy. As for you, I'm going to say things positive. That's what Ya'qub shows us as well. So this is the first meaning. The second meaning. Here is a reference to the Quran and to Islam. Because the biggest blessing is the Quran. And the biggest blessing is Islam. This beautiful surah, my dear brothers and sisters, it is one of the most powerful surahs in the Quran to battle issues of depression, to make us overcome feelings of negativity. And to summarize once again, the surah is 11 verses. The first two is a qasam from Allah, an optimistic qasam is going to come a new day. Then the next three verses are about removing the feelings of spiritual worthlessness. I'm not good enough, Allah doesn't love me. The next three verses are about removing the feelings of being unlucky, unfortunate. Ah, life is always tough. No, there are positives you have. And then the final three verses, Allah says to all of us, take that negativity and challenge it into something positive. Give back to your community and give back to this religion. And through all of this, you will find meaning in life. And through all of this, you will overcome these feelings of negativity.